everyone, it's Patrice, and I'm going to be showing you how I painted DJ Khaled. So I'm just blocking in a background right now, but that'll change a lot throughout the video. I've already blocked in a lot of the darkest parts and some really deep shadows by using a mix of burnt umber and cadmium red, and then thinning that out with some terpenoid natural. So... He has a lot of shadows, a lot of deep shadows underneath his nose and towards the right side of his face because his head is at an angle. Then I'm just blocking in his eyelids. And then I mixed a mid-tone color. I think it was... Um, I just added some titanium white to that cadmium red and burnt umber mixture. Maybe a little bit of bright rose or bright pink. And the brush I'm, the brush I'm using is the number two brush. I don't know what brand. And now I'm adding a little bit of red ochre to that mix. Now I'm defining the nose slightly. Just trying to map out and fill in those values so that I'll know where to darken, where to lighten, and what else to add. some slight highlights. about gessoing is that if you apply too much which I think I did and even if you just apply gesso it'll soak up the very first layers of paint so I would suggest doing an underpainting so that your real layers you know those that you want to show and those that you want to stand out won't get sucked up so easily um, into the gesso and you won't have to keep applying layer after layer of the same thing so I'm just blocking in his forehead the highlights over his eyebrows and underneath and you'll see that I move his hairline up a little bit actually a lot What I do is I apply a very flat, general layer, and then I keep layering and layering. I work on his eye, then I work on his nose, then I work on his other eye, then I work on his lips, his chin, his mustache, his beard, his cheek, his forehead, his other cheek, and his hairline, and his hair, and his sweater, and then the background. And then I go over the shadows and then I go 
to the midtones, and then I go to the highlights. And what I really spend most of my time on is skin texture and getting those uh, maybe he has acne scars or just aged skin, getting those um, spots right. And you'll see what I mean when I when I say that the gesso soaks up your first very first layers of paint because. Looking at what I'm doing now, you'll think that that's very dark and it's very, um, those are very solid, bold lines. But maybe the next clip after this, you'll see that they dried pretty matte and pretty, and that is, they dried lighter. So it's almost like working with watercolor, your very first few layers. So just keep going, don't get discouraged. Also, I'll be adding all of the paints that I used and their brands in the description box below. darkest parts have dried significantly so what I do is I mix ultramarine blue and and um, burnt umber to get a really dark black but it's not as black as lamp black which I will be using in this video and as you can see I'm covering up the background now this background color is very similar to the one in the reference photo that I'm using, um, but it'll change again <laughs> in this video. And as you can see, I'm moving up his hairline, but then I realize that I have to move it up again. Probably the toughest part was getting the angle right. I'm just continuing to layer. What I do is I put down the darkest color and I put down a color slightly lighter than that, slightly lighter than that to make him look more three dimensional. So as I do this, I'm just making sure to get his, I start from dark to light, making sure to get all the darkest parts so that I can build on top of that with lighter colors. And I'll blend all of this out later, making sure to blend in between colors, like the demarcation line, so that I don't muddy up um, I don't overblend, basically. You want to be able to see the individual shades so that um, it's not flat. His face doesn't appear flat.
as you can see, I blended all those colors together and I, this clip is slightly, um, this is a clip ahead. So you didn't get to see everything that I did, but um, I added some more layers. I added like one layer on top of that first layer. And then I just blended it out so that it looks more like skin. And I tend to work with small brushes so that I can get that skin texture detail. And I'll be changing, I'll be darkening up the eyes because in the video, since his head is tilted down, his eyes are deeply shadowed and they're not very light, the whites of his eyes. And the highlights are smaller. The great thing about oil paint is that you can correct your mistakes. So you can go over, you know, the highlights or whatever you did wrong and correct them. As I'm painting, I'm looking and making sure to look at my reference photo all the time, very frequently. Basically, every time I pick up paint from my palette, I'm looking at my reference photo and making sure I'm putting it down where I'm supposed to. I use pretty much the same um, palette for every skin tone that I paint, except for lighter skin tones, I use more titanium white and less burnt umber um, and less yellow ochre. And for this oil painting, I had to use a lot of burnt umber only because of the deep shadows. But I also had to add um, bright pink to my palette because it really helped with the highlights that weren't completely white. I'm sorry for the blurriness in a few clips, but I hope you can hang in there and still understand what I'm doing. So here you see me adding really tiny details. And this is to help with carving out his skin texture. So this is probably a mix of burnt umber and yellow ochre. And here's some red ochre by itself. So DJ Khaled has some scars just like I'm sure everybody has scars on their face and he has you know pores <laughs> and just like everyone else um, so
so I'm just defining those with some deeper colors because if you look at him head on I'm sure in person you won't see these colors exactly but in the photo you see these colors or shades By the way, this is a Michael Michael's brush I'm using that came in a pack of five, and it costs I think four ninety nine. It's pretty good. It's very tiny, so it's great for those little details. Now, since his head is tilted to the side and down. You don't want to just make the shadow completely black. There are more, some shadows are completely black, completely dark, you can't see, they're not reflecting any light, but there are other shadows that have more values within them. So before I get to complete black, I go between that with burnt umber or a mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue to get kind of an off black shade not completely black but close to it like a blue black and then over that with <clears throat> um, red ochre mixed with burnt umber and maybe a little bit of yellow ochre So really what I'm doing is just kind of mimicking the pattern of his skin, which I really love to do. And you don't have to do this. This is not like a rule of painting or anything. This is just what I like to do. I like to paint in a sort of photorealistic or hyperrealistic way, just to exaggerate, you know, somebody's skin texture, just to make it seem as if you can touch his skin, you know? This is just one way of painting. Soon I'll probably be showing you guys portraits of more of an ala prima style, which is smoother. You know, you can't really see any pores or real skin texture, but you can see, but you still have the likeness of the person. You still The thing about painting in a realistic style is that you have to paint what you see. So as you practice and you kind of get the hang of it, you start, you know, just remembering, you know, using those tools that you've developed and, you know, you know what to do in certain situations. but. Every painting is going to be different because not you're not going to be painting the same thing all the time. And as you develop, your skills will be will get better, and you'll notice different things. So right now is really the glazing part, and what glazing is is just having um, putting a maybe a mix of paint over um, a layer of paint, basically, you know. But really, it's supposed to be a thin layer. Thin layer.
glazing is supposed to give more of a realistic appearance more of a lifelike appearance so i'm glazing with um yellow ochre and red ochre because those you know those flushed tones really bring you know someone to life <clears throat> and i'm glazing in between the highlights so that they'll make the highlights pop and stand out So overall I think I worked on this painting for six or seven days, which is pretty fast for me, honestly. I think it was because it's so small, but it's pretty fast for me. Um, it was difficult, I'm not gonna lie, it was difficult, <laughs> especially because Gesso just sucks up pretty much everything. All your hard work, like for all, all your hard work. And, hmm. And the crop of the plaque getting in the angle of his, his head was just, you know, just made it more difficult. And filming is difficult too because, you know, the camera's in front of me and it's kind of blocking my view of, you know, the computer with the reference photo and the, the um, plaque, so the painting. I tried to show everything, but you know, it's just kind of impossible to to show everything and get, you know, get this painting as detailed as I want. So I just tried to get the best, most important parts. And as you can see, I'm putting down yellow ochre and burnt umber on the nose and then a very thin layer and that's me glazing. And then I use a bigger brush to blend it out. And here I'm glazing again in between these highlights and mid-tones just to bring his face to life a little bit because he's a little pale on this side of his face. and not including the left side of his face but if you or his or the top half or the bottom half but if you wanted like a texture like the nose you could just leave it like that you know what i mean because it's built up enough where it looks slightly 3d-ish or three-dimensional and you know if that's the kind of texture you want in your paintings you know, the kind of realism you like, and then you can totally do that. Just stay away from the flatness um, of the bottom half of his face, like his lips and his chin. And you know, if you like that, that's fine. You know, do what you want to do. But, you know, if you want to learn how to paint realistically, more photorealistically, or more hyperrealistically, then, you know, keep watching <laughs> and I've added some highlights to the left side of his face and I'm just blending those out with a thin layer of glaze And I'll definitely be bringing the whites of his eye down a few levels.
glazing just kind of brings everything together and it makes it more believable you know because skin is translucent in a way you know we have veins that we can see you know we have redness um yeah and you have you know we have bones we have a skeletal makeup so you know we have cheekbone high cheekbones some of us we have you know strong noses and all those things create dimension <clears throat> and create you know shadows and highlights you know so glazing definitely helps with that looking at the reference photo to make sure that you're painting that person accurately and honestly the first few layers of your painting you know it's going to be unrecognizable as a human being don't don't stop just keep going you know the first few layers are going to be like weird and confusing but you know just Keep in mind that that's always going to happen. And it'll just keep getting better. That's all. What will make this easier is just thinking of shapes. You can think of his lip, you know, as like a bow, an arrow kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's that shape or, um, the shape of his chin with his beard is kind of like a C, you know what I mean? Or like little shapes in his, that make up his skin texture, you know, circles, uh, you know, V's, weird things like that, you know what I mean? Those are easily recognizable to us because we're used to 
we understand that. So if you break it down like that, then it will be a little easier. Also save your bold lines for the detailed layers. You know what I mean? When you're about to be done with um, a section of the face or a specific feature, leave those bold lines like the highlights in the, you know, Burnt on Burnt Plus Ultramarine that'll like define the shape of the shadow underneath his nose. Leave that for close to the end. Oh yeah, you guys can leave like suggestions for like sketchbook videos, like what do you want to see me paint, what do you want to see me draw, blah blah blah, and I'll be doing a speedier version of this, it'll be literally a speed paint, this is just the tutorial, so look out for the speed painting version of this, this, this Wednesday.
this is the finished painting of DJ Khaled. So like, comment, and subscribe if you want. And I'll see you guys next time. If you want to purchase this painting, you can wait for the end of this, the very end of the video. And I'll have my email and all that information. And also, you can just check the description box below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.